Okay, we have a Norcold refrigerator. I believe it's a Norcold 1200. It was originally installed in our 2006 American Coach Eagle 45H. I'm going to be um, removing this refrigerator because it has failed last week, and I'm going to be installing a residential refrigerator in its place. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is to shut off the propane supply because this obviously this refrigerator does run on propane as one of the modes. Okay, we're down at the propane tank for the coach. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is to turn off the propane to the coach. So I'm going to use this hand valve right here and turn it clockwise to shut it off. Right now I'm going to be removing the outside panel to the rear of the refrigerator. And I would suggest you pull the fuse for your refrigerator in the fuse panel. Um, mine, I believe, is a a 10 amp fuse. I pulled that first to make sure there was no 12 volts running through there because I don't no longer need it. Now I have fans located on the outside and I've already pulled the fuses for the fans and for this ARP controller that I had on there for about six months that ended up uh, failing. Um, so what I'm going to do is since I don't have any power to these fans or to the refrigerator I'm going ahead and start and cut the wiring for the fans so that I can remove this cover and leave it down so it doesn't get in my way. And since they are painted, you want, want to make sure you put them in a good spot so that they don't, uh, this, these side covers don't get scratched up while you're in here working. Okay, what I did in here was um, eliminate the uh, controller I put in there and the fan. Um, wiring I've got some wiring still hanging down from the fans and the thermal sensor that used to be in there that's pretty much all I did is kind of cut out some of the stuff I've still got to remove some of this wiring um, there's two receptacles inside here and I've unplugged them one is this from the receptacle and this one I believe this one's the ice maker this one's something else to do with the fridge because it was it also powered this on the board so I disconnected this from the board this is the other end of this 110 and basically what I'm doing is just trying to disconnect everything and it looks as if our propane line is this line right here so what we're going to have to do is disconnect it right here at this fitting okay we got the 3 8 flare plug that is going to plug this this propane line feeder line for the old fridge okay. we'll get this tightened here and we'll be set in this area for now move inside and start figuring out what I need to do in there get that you won't need to use any thread thread locker on these uh, flare fittings because uh, they see it in the in the in the actual flare so um, leak test it later put some soap bubbles on it once we get the uh, propane turned back on and uh, all right the top of the fridge here we got these this trim and we got these little uh, screw caps you stick your fingernail into there and or a screwdriver and pop them off and uh, we can remove the screws uh, looks like they're pretty stripped oh well instead of pulling the hinges off just take the, the bolts off the very top of this door and once I do that I lift the door up and then it just comes off like it did on this side so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do is just pull the pull the pins off the top of these uh, of the hinges that go into the doors. Okay, so there's uh, there's all four doors off. It only took a few minutes to get them off. Um, now that I've got the doors off, now I can concentrate. Got to make sure you remove all your sliding drawers and stuff, especially the glass ones. Get all the pieces out of there, the pieces that'll fall, like the shelves. Remove all the shelves and everything just to get them out, out of the way so you don't have to worry about um, them coming out on you when you're 
when you're trying to move the situ move the whole uh, refrigerator out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove shelves. Um, actually, to get the shelves out, you'll have to move, remove these screws. So I probably won't worry about these, but I definitely need to get these uh, glass uh, sliding um, shelves out. Those will be the first thing that I need to take out next. Um, I've got a couple wires coming through. This actually went through the vent, um, the actual drain um, for the fans that I had mounted on top. But I took those out. So I got all the wiring disconnected from the back. And um, on the bottom here, you'll see some more of those uh, pop-off uh, screw cap covers. So there's four more screws like there is on the top that are on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is pop these out and then um, unscrew the four screws in the bottom and then pull this trim piece off. Let me see at that point how loose this thing is, and I'll know if uh, there's anything more I need to take off, but it might just be these screws. Okay, after I took the four screws out of the top and the four screws out the bottom, behind the trim, I can, I can pull the, the fridge. I can move it. So, let me get this. Bottom loose. Oh, I know. Is this going to fit? I can move the top. I got to get the bottom moved. Once I got the four bolts out, the four on top and the four on the bottom, I was able to start sliding it out. Then, um, I noticed there was uh, two bolts in the very back below the burner and electronic section that were dragging. Two uh, big screws that had a uh, Phillips head on them. So I took those out and also I noticed when I was back there that the compartment sliding out from the other side is that there was the water line connected to the ice maker. So I went ahead and disconnected the water line. It was a yellow plastic line and I moved that out of the way. And I wanted to make sure on the back through that, that vent on the side, which is the back of the refrigerator, I wanted to make sure that there was no more wires connected from the coach to the refrigerator unit because I was pulling the unit out and if you look in through the vent, you can see what's moving. So you want to make sure that, that nothing is connected as um, plugged in or any wires connected from the coach to the refrigerator because the whole refrigerator is going to come out inside the coach get somebody to help you because as I'm sliding this out um, the bottom feels very heavy so even though it doesn't look like it weighs very much it does have some um, some some weight to it so I'm going to get a second person to help me um, support the bottom as we slide it out now if you look at the top here um, this is most likely going to hit so we're going to have to slide the bottom out to a certain point and then tip the top of the refrigerator down so it doesn't hit the air conditioning unit so we're gonna have to finagle this a little bit hold the bottom and tip the top and uh, like I said I don't know how how heavy this is but it's uh, two people should be able to handle it and I'm gonna put this piece of cardboard on the floor I've got two carpets down over the tile okay I had my son help me lift the refrigeration unit out this is the Norcold unit. This is the back. Apparently there was some fans on this, but I don't think these fans are working anymore. So I had one installed inside of the, that's the outside vent on the side from the inside. And then I had installed another fan up there that I'm taking out as well. But this pretty much is what the box looks like from the inside. See now, because of the height of the new refrigerator I'm putting in, I'm going to have to cut where this drawer was at, probably about halfway. The refrigerator is about a day out, so when it comes in, I can measure the exact height and find out how much of this bottom cabinet I'm going to 
have to take out and then I'll have to build another uh, floor because there's there's um, there's some pipes and some water lines that go underneath so I'm gonna have to build another subfloor for the new refrigerator refrigerator to sit on the new um, residential refrigerator so I'm gonna plug all these holes up here insulate it then I'm gonna plug these holes in here and uh, get everything cleaned up once I got the old refrigerator out into the kitchen area I went ahead and bought some three-quarter inch foam insulation with foil on one side I put the foil to the outside and I filled in the space um, behind the um, the outdoor vent that makes the refrigeration controls accessible um, so the air was just coming in here and I wanted to stop it because it's real windy out and I wanted to get that done first so that I didn't have the stuff blowing all over the place and then for the um, vent at the top I took the same insulation and I just doubled it I just cut it into the size of the hole and pushed it up in there with the foil up and then I cut another piece and pushed it up in there and just taped it with this duct tape and in the um, ice feeder water line right here this feeds the ice machine um, I've got the pump turned off so that it won't come squirting out so I've got this up here to remind myself I've got to hook this up to the new fridge and then like back here is just the propane line that we had before that's going to go push back there and this was the power right here the 12 volt power for the fridge um, that one I've taken the fuse out of that wire so it, there's no power to it now there's two receptacles back here one was for the refrigerator this one's for the ice maker and it's marked I for inverter and this one was marked marked R for refrig refrigerator and that one's not on the inverter so when I plug my refrigerator in my new um, residential refrigerator I'm plugging it into the I which is the inverter because I want the refrigerator to run off the inverter so if you have an ice maker in your motor home then you'll probably have two plugs very similar to that one marked I and R and if not then you can just uh, unplug your motor home don't run your generator and you can plug test it and find out which one is on the inverter and which one isn't okay I removed the passenger seat or passenger chair and there's only four bolts on it right here underneath and then just one wire connector there was a couple other ones I disconnected but I reconnected those because they belong on the chair but first I need to get this old fridge out of here um, I think what I'm gonna do is grab some plastic or cardboard around this real sharp uh, fins right here I don't want it to catch on anything tear anything up I'm not worried about the fins I'm just worried about tearing something up on the way out and most everything else is pretty much um, dealt with I don't have any shelves left in here I'm gonna pull this ice maker thing sticking out the front and I'm probably gonna pull these uh, these hinges hinge plates off so that way I don't have anything sticking out protruding so when I go to get it out I don't have anything to hang up on okay I was going to film removing the original RV fridge out the door the uh, the regular side door but my neighbor came over and we just got going on it uh, what I can tell you and describe how it's gonna need to work at least in these models is I had to replace obviously uh, remove the screen door then we turned the refrigerator sideways so that the open face which would normally be where the doors are at I removed all the doors hinges anything that sticks out remove it and I faced it towards the windshield that means the back of the refrigerator the back of the refrigerator faces here and the front of the face of the refrigerator faces right here so it's going out sideways there it is right there so 
We tried it a couple different ways, but because of all the um, refrigerant hoses, I mean the refrigerant lines that are on the back of the refrigerator, it kept hanging up right along this lip right here because it has to go in at an angle. I've got a doghouse right here, so the fridge can't come straight this way. So the only way we were able to get it out is to lay the refrigerator completely flat. So what we had to do is get it on its side. I got it right here. I had to go on the bottom, lift it up, and then the person on the inside by the driver's seat had to lift the refrigerator up this way. So the only way we could get it out was directly straight facing that way, just out that way. And that's the only way it can clear the door. I had the cardboard taped up against this door so that it wouldn't tear the hell out of the door because it rubbed on both sides all the way out. So um, it can be done, but you have to basically lift it straight up and take it out flat. And then once you get it on this side, on the uh, in the coach, you can start to drop it down once you get past this um, this doghouse right here. So I guess I got a little ding there, but um, you can you can drop it down at that point, and then we got it out, but it barely fit. Slowly but surely, I'm cutting up this this subfloor that had the old fridge in it, and I need to go down to. About where this pipe's at, so I'm gonna have to drop this pipe down. And there's enough of a there's enough pipe coming up from up from uh, below that I can cut that down, and I'll probably have to extend that um, vacuum looking hose. Okay, I got most of the bottom done there. Except for moving the pipe. But a friend gave me the idea, hey, why don't you just take the top of the cabinet off? So I removed the, the frame piece, decorative frame piece, and now I'm removing the stuff in the back. Then my daughter called me as I'm taking everything apart, happily moving it up, because I'm like, hey, I got it. I'm moving it up and I got plenty of room. I got plenty of, you know, plenty of plenty of stuff to move with. But the problem is, boom right here this is my AC return and also this stuff right here is the ductwork supply duct well this AC return hangs down about two and three quarters inches so that cuts into my extra space that I cut in that's fine I'm still cutting all this out of here which is fine because I still need to move up higher than that so I'm going to drop that pipe down just a little bit I'll be clear build my floor and then I'll clean all this out for the fridge because I'll need move, room to move it around. And then when I get all this taken out here, um, then I'll determine, I think my, my top is right here. And then my bottom is down in right, right around here. One of these two, I think it's this one. That's the 70, 70 inches exactly for the fridge. So... I've got some things to do. Cut these out. These piece, any pieces sticking out. I need to move this back. This uh, protects the electrical cord and stuff. I'm going to cut this back and put another piece in there and build a piece of frame across there so the refrigerator can only go so far back. Um, I've got it set for 24 and a half inches. 24 and a half inches will bring it out to this edge right here. Then the doors will stick out about another three and a half inches here. Um, from the fridge, from the front of the fridge, and then fold out. So um, I have to do that. Otherwise, if I put the doors farther in, then the hinges will hit when they try to open. So the doors have to be clear of here. So the frame has to end here at this edge, this outside edge. And then the doors sit out another three and a half inches so they can pivot on their hinges on the outside of the frame, not on the inside. So I've still got some more work to do, more challenges as I go around. And at the same time, I just received some solar, so I'm going to use this as a ductwork to run my solar wire down. As I've probably said that before, but that's what I'm going to do also in between tearing all this stuff out and getting it all straightened out. Um, there's a lot of screws, there's a lot of uh, small finish nails, and there's a lot of staples. 
So just when you think you've uh, you've gotten what you need, if you look at the back of here, um, they've got screws here in the finished um, cabinet wood. But then behind that, there'll be screws going into the back of that. And then there'll be little finish nails all over the place. You can see little holes all over the place. It's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. So I ran into a situation where my um, video card had a fault. So I lost some video. So I'm going to have to finish this with description and pictures. So anyways, what I did was um, I took some 2x4s and some angle brackets and I created supports in the floor and some of them um, whenever I could I would um, connect to the wall or any other structure plus the floor so that um, I could lay everything out so that it wasn't in the way of the moving drain or wires or piping because just to the left of the picture on the other side of that real thin wall is a slide that goes in and out. So those tubes and wires and drain that are in the very back of the um, picture, those are all moving when uh, the slide goes in and out. So I had to make sure that none of my structures or my supports were going to interfere with those wires or tubes or drain at all. So once I put them all in, I ran my slide in and out to verify that I wasn't going to have an issue. So um, I went ahead and added the, uh, the supports, checked it, and then um, you'll see in the next picture that um, I added another one and then also added some stoppers on the very back wall so that the fridge wouldn't, um, wouldn't try to move backwards. Because I've got the receptacles back there, I don't want them crushing them. Um, so look at that. The uh, and then the very next uh, slide we have is the three-quarter inch plywood that I used to um, act as the base of the subfloor. You'll see the um, marks a lot marking on there. That's where the wood is down below, so I know where to sink my screws into. And in the far back, you'll see a 1x2 with some tape on there. That's a stopper as well as on the wall. There's two more stoppers that I ended up moving a little bit once I got the fridge in there because I didn't want it to be in the way of the vents. Also, the back left corner is cut off at an angle. That's because um, some of the hot water and cold water lines go up over the top of the drain that I cut and dropped when uh, the slide goes in. So I wanted to make sure that the plywood is not going to interfere with the, um, with the tubes, but since I'm going to add a little height on this for the refrigerator, it should just slide right into the refrigerator and you'll see what I'm going to do next, which actually I'm going to put black plastic down and I'm going to tape around it to make sure if I get any moisture in there it's not going to seep down under the floor and cause all kinds of problems. The, um, then I'm also going to also install a, um, uh, a pad like under sink pad that will absorb some moisture and plus add a little padding for the wheels so the wheels aren't going to want to move around because the fridge has wheels underneath it. And um, also what I was going to say is when I put the supports underneath this piece of plywood I, I screwed down into the uh, the plywood of the motorhome, but I only used three quarter inch screws because that's three quarter inch plywood. And with the thickness of the of the L brackets that I used, it wasn't going to go through the other side because who knows what's on the other side of the uh, um, the flooring? There could be hoses, drains, whatever, and I don't want stuff scraping on there and causing a leak down the line. And I also painted the uh, three quarter inch plywood just so it would have a little bit of uh, so it wouldn't absorb the moisture, like I said, in case the refrigerator did leak or anything. I just want to make sure because they have a condensation tray and you're moving around and it could splash up, splash out. So I just wanted to verify that that wasn't going to happen. I also um, got rid of the uh, the one by two piece of wood that was going around the 
protruding um, wires that go up under the receptacles up in the far back right. And um, I put some L brackets on the bottom of the 2x4 above, above there so that the wood would not wear on the the Romex electrical cords in the far back right. So I taped everything. I want to make sure there's plenty of tape on everything. So if anything did rub, it's not going to rub through. It's not metal to wire. It's not wood to, you know, plastic, whatever. I want to make sure that everything, if it was metal underneath or wood or, or could be a sharp edge, I just taped everything to make sure that if there was anything that was going to rub, it wasn't going to rub through. And if it hit something, then it would just go ahead and slide through. Now that the subfloor for the uh, new refrigerator was ready, my next step was to completely dismantle just about everything I could off the new Samsung refrigerator in the garage. What I did, I began with taking off the top um, hinges, got the doors off. Um, on the freezer, did everything but the sliders. The door comes off and all the trays took out every shelf, everything on the inside, and then the feet were sticking out. There's a, the feet are actually are the adjustments for the front of the refrigerator. The back is stationary and the front you can independently move each side. So I took those brackets off. I didn't want anything sticking out of the fridge. Basically just the bare bones fridge. So uh, uh, there was four of us. We had two at the bottom, two at the top. And we walked it up through the side door just like we took the old refrigerator out we did it in the same manner the people on the inside lifted it up over the doghouse and the people on the outside held it up high as they walked through the door this fridge actually was easier to move in than the old nor cold was to get through back out through that door so we got it in there and then i set it right in the middle on a piece of cardboard and then started reassembling everything got everything reassembled and the maybe 15, 20 minutes, didn't take very long. Then I just let the fridge sit there for 24 hours. Since we laid it on its side, I wanted to make sure that it was um, uh, gonna sit up there and uh, stabilize. And so the next day I uh, connected my ice maker line and I plugged it into the inverter receptacle and then um, had my neighbors come over, my son, and we lifted it up and placed it, tilted the uh, top forward a little bit to get it past the HVAC um, return that hangs down from the ceiling. And then we put it in. And at that time, when we first put it in, even though it was level, it sat farther in the back. It kind of, it was, it set back a little bit. The top was farther back than the bottom a little bit. So, um, my son and I talked about it and we said, okay, we're going to have to pull it out. But just the two of us, we weren't going to lift it up because it's probably about eight inches off the floor. And we weren't going to be, two of us weren't going to be lifting it in and out of there. So I built a, um, a platform that was the same height as the fridge. And I used four by fours as feet. And then I had another piece of three quarter plywood. So we stuck it right in front of the refrigerator and just basically slid it out back on the platform. Um, we all, I also realized that I'm going to have to put something in front of the fridge because the doors stick out about three and a half inches from the outside edge of the cabinet. Um, and so do those feet, those adjustable feet. You have to have something under those adjustable feet in order for them to you adjust the fridge. So I cut four by fours the same height as the cabinet so they could sit in front of the um, cabinet and the feet will sit on them. So I moved everything out of the way. We slid the fridge out and I put a piece of um, half inch plywood from the very back of the platform to about the middle of the fridge for the back wheels. And we put the fridge back in, and it's, it was the opposite. The top was out farther. So I went back and bought a piece of quarter inch plywood. We cut it, moved the fridge back out again for the second time, um, replaced the 
half inch piece of plywood with the quarter inch and put it back in and everything was fine. And that leveled the fridge out perfectly. And um, at that point, I slid the, uh, the pieces of 4x4 four four back underneath the feet. Um, and my next move was to try to figure out how I was going to uh, secure the fridge in the hole so that it won't slide out when I make a turn or it's not going to move around. I wanted to keep that fridge completely secure in that hole. And there's only a few options to do that, and that's what we're going to do next. The next thing we are doing is securing the refrigerator inside of the hole. And the first thing that I did was invest in some flat aluminum, two inch wide, and I think it's about 16th or an eighth inch thick. I've got a picture of it. And then go right inside the lip of the refrigerator next to the seal and then come out and screw it directly to the uh, facial part of the cabinet as you can see in the picture I did that on both sides upper and lower as well as um, having the 4x4 four four feet on top of um, underneath the uh, front of the refrigerator and I've got close-ups of that as well. And what I did was took a furniture um, a foot protection and screwed that to the top of the 4x4 so that the adjustable um, feet on the front of the refrigerator would uh, sit in there and not slide around. And also, there are front wheels that are inside of the feet that sit on top of the edge of the cabinet under the refrigerator and I put the um, steel stock piece under there uh, and bolted it to the cabinet to keep the wheels from rolling and there's a, a picture of those as well as the picture of the flat steel that I used to screw to the front of the cabinet to keep those wheels from moving forward. So once I got the fridge secured with the, uh, the steel stock, the 4x4s four under the feet and the uh, Two inch aluminum um, flat um, stock. Uh, we basically went on vacation for a couple days and uh, everything was fine. Everything, nothing moved, didn't have any problems, used the fridge for a week, worked great. Um, so when we came home, um, I had to finish my solar project, which I'll be posting later. And then when I finished that, then I just went ahead and uh, started figuring out the trim for the uh, for the fridge, and also staining the uh, the four by fours, and then putting caps where the screws. I screwed the four by fours to the actual cabinet so they wouldn't move around, and stained and finished everything, sealed it, and then um, stained and sealed the the trim going around. And then there was a piece of trim on top that I had to cut and and glue on and stuff because I wanted to you know make it look right so now it's all finished and I also did before I finished the trim on the side I also put some uh, stiff foam um, upholstery foam along the side of the fridge so it wouldn't rock side to side I just wanted to kind of cover all the bases I did leave a couple inches of air space at the top of the fridge of course the sides are, are covered but the bottom's open and the top's open so that we can get some cross ventilation because there's two vents on the back of the fridge. I think one's an um, intake and the other one's an exhaust. Pulls from underneath, but then it also exhausts back there, so it probably comes out the top. I did feel some air, and as long as I, I've got that open, I feel I got enough airflow through the fridge. Everything seemed to work fine. It stayed at, you know, it's 37 degrees or whatever it was set at. Didn't have any issues with it. It cooled down quickly, and it was, I don't know, almost 100 degrees where we were staying. We had the AC on, but it was it was warm the whole time and not, not a problem with the fridge because there's no outside air involved. Um, if you got any questions, uh, just ask. But, um, you know, it was every, every uh, motorhome or RV install is going to be completely different because you have, um, you're going to have different things that pop up, and I really don't... Uh, figure I'm planning too much.
I just have to figure it out once I've got it got to that point. And the trim, I had absolutely no idea what I was going to do. And just went and walking around Home Depot or Lowe's, and then I would see something that might look good. So we'd pick it up, and then if it worked out, great. If it didn't, take it back. And and then I finally found something that worked out. So uh, you're probably going to have to do pretty much the same thing when you're uh, when you're putting yours together.